Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you stand just a minute longer, I'm going to read uh, scripture to you. I'm going to preach to you just a little while. Amen. And um, glory to God. Here we go, slowly but surely. There it is. Jeremiah was not a bullfrog. Must be a young crew in here. Nobody laughed at that. We got some oldies in here who know what I'm talking about. Uh, Jeremiah was a prophet. There was a song in the early 70s. She, Sister Sheila, you remember that song, don't you? Yes, of course you do. Jeremiah chapter 1, he was a prophet. Verse 4, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Woo! And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified or I separated thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, that's Jeremiah, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Praise God. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Amen. God told Jeremiah the prophet, he said, When you in your mother's womb I called you, I ordained you to be a prophet. Before you could even think, I was calling you. The title of my message today is God is calling, you just don't know it yet. <laughs> praise God, praise God. Let's everybody lift our hands and our voices to the Lord and ask Him one more time to move in this service. Come on, pray, saints. Lord, we want to hear from you today. God, we want your presence. Hallelujah. We need your spirit, Lord. In the name of Jesus. 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 Open our hearts and our minds. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Turn around and shake hands with somebody before you're seated. Thank you for standing. Go ahead and welcome them into the house of the Lord today. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Oh, yes, there is, a, there is a sweet, sweet spirit here today. Hallelujah. The Bible tells the story of, of Abraham and Sarah. And when we first meet Abraham in the Bible, his name was not Abraham, but his name was Abram. And... The name Abram, the name Abram means respected father or honored father. Amen. High father. We, do, we put our fathers on a pedestal as we should, don't we? But God said, I have a bigger calling for you. It's great that your children honor you. It's great that they call you high father, but... I've got a better plan for you and bigger plan for you. And God said, I'm going to change your name to Abraham, which means a father of a multitude or a father of nations. Amen. He might have thought that his job was just to be a good dad. God said, I've got much bigger plans for you than that. Sarah's name originally when we meet her was spelled Sarah I S A R A I. And it means my princess. You know, we call a lot of little girls my princess, don't we? Amen. And, of course, a lot of little girls act like little princesses. And, and, but, but when we say that, we mean that. You know, I, I never had a girl of my own. I had two little nasty boys. And, you know, I, you know, I was thankful that I was able to, 
to have Millie for a time and to be able to say, this is my little princess. Praise God. My princess. We say that as a, as a term of endearment or term of affection. And we mean it when we say it. But God said, I have bigger plans for Sarah. She is not just going to be daddy's little girl. But he changed her name to Sarah with an H. Which that little change means princess of nations. You're not just going to be daddy's little girl, but I've got something bigger in mind for your life. Amen. Do you realize today that God has bigger plans for most of us? I started to say some of us, but I say most of us. But God has bigger plans for most of us than we even realize today and as of yet. You may have an idea of what you think that God wants to do in your life and through you, but you really have no idea because God has more than you could possibly ever imagine. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. There are people that spend their lives going through books and workshops trying to find themselves. And in reality, God often upsets our little apple cart and He calls us to something that we never even dreamed that we would be involved in. Amen. He calls us to places. He calls us to churches. He calls us to ministries. He calls us to missions that we didn't even imagine. And sometimes as people, because we're human and because we think this way, we look around and we look at, we in our minds, we think, oh, this person would make a good X and this person would make a good Y and this person would make a good Z and this person would be good at this and good at that. But the Bible said that the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. He said not many wise men after the flesh are called not many mighty and not many noble are called but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and he's chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and sometimes that person that you look at that you think will never amount to a hill of beans God says that's exactly the one that I'm going to use to turn your world upside down Amen don't put limitations on God Don't put limitations on who he can call and who he will use. I have spent a lifetime as a pastor trying to figure out people. And I have spent a lifetime as a pastor trying to figure out God. And I have said this one would be a good youth leader. This one would be a good ladies auxiliary leader. And God, like God told Samuel when he was trying to pick a king, he said, I have rejected all of these. I'm going to pick this one over in the corner that you never dreamed of. I'm going to pick this person over here that you could not even imagine that I would raise up. But when God raises them up, he knows exactly what he's doing. And he knows that already down inside, he has planted something inside of them to equip them for the calling that he has for their life. Hallelujah. When we started this church, Sister Amanda didn't know the first thing about playing a piano. Amen. And God help us. But I said, well, I'll teach you a little bit. That's all right. Go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. And I showed her a chord or two, what little bit I know, because I know dink, 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 dink. That's all that I know. And, and what, what we found real quickly, Brother Curry was his, she picked it up much faster than I ever had. I've been dink, 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 dinking for the last 30 years. And that's as far as I've ever got. But what came to me was the realization of Romans 4, 17. God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. And He is able to speak things into your life before this service is over with. He had already planted a calling and a talent and an ability into her life and into her heart. It was just waiting to get out. And there's some of you today, maybe God's got you called to be a missionary. Maybe He's got you called to be a Sunday school teacher. He's got you called to do a work you just don't know it yet come on somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise hallelujah my oldest son said something to me a few years ago a couple years ago 
And he didn't mean it, he didn't say it meaning it to hurt my feelings, but it kind of hurt my feelings. They do that, don't they? And he said, he was telling me I was just kind of expressing some things to him and some, some problems and issues, and I, but I knew what he was doing. He's running from God right now. I knew what he was doing. I know the devil. The Bible says to be, be wary of the devil's devices. And, and, but my son says to me, he says, you know, he's talking about the, the ministry, and he said, but that, that's, that's all that you've ever known. And the way that it came across to me was he was, it was almost like, I probably shouldn't be talking about him, he's not here to defend himself, I love my son, okay? But it was almost as if it was coming across, Brother Shorter is like, you know, you just, Dad, you just haven't seen enough of the world yet, you know? You just haven't been, you haven't been out there, and of course he has no idea, we all think that about our parents, don't we? Amen. And, and, and the thing about it is, is I was thinking about that, going back to that in my mind this morning, and I thought, no, it's not all that I've ever known, but I can tell you this. I do know that one day in a, in a college classroom that he called me and he called me to preach. Hallelujah. I know that it hasn't always been fun. I know that. I know that it hasn't always been fun to preach things that weren't popular at times, but you got to preach what God tells you to preach. you got to deliver it anyhow, whether it makes people mad or not you still got to preach it I know I know what God called me to do I know what he has called me to be and I know that that's what I've got to do amen I remember I'm got brother brother Matt talked about about being real for I'm going to be real just a minute I went through a period of time in my life I went through a period of time where I was backslidden and away from God and I can tell you this I'm talking about after, after having preached for years I was backslid and away from God. And I went through a period in my life where I could hear the people and the voices in one ear. And in one ear, you know what they were saying to me? In one ear, they were saying, you're divorced. You're done. You're finished. You're through. In the one ear, in the one ear, there were people, people that were my friends, I'm talking about. People in one ear were saying, you used to be a preacher. In the one ear, they were saying, God used to talk to you. In one ear, they were saying, you used to be anointed. In one ear, they were saying, you used to be used by God. But I knew that even in a backslidden state, I would get up in the morning and I would open up my Bible. And when I opened up my Bible in the other ear, I said in the other ear the Lord said I'm going to touch your lips and this is what I want you to preach this is what I want you to say I'm not finished with you yet I've still got a work for you to do I've still got a calling on your life I have not changed that not one bit and when God called you from your mother's womb he called you for a lifetime somebody say amen I'd slam, I'd slam the Bible shut. And I'd tell God, I don't want to hear that. In the one year, I had people telling me, they would say, just go to church and sit on a pew and keep your mouth shut and be thankful. And I tried that. And I sat on a pew. And every time I would open up the Bible as the preacher was preaching, I'd open it up and the Lord said, here is what I want you to preach. And I'd shut it again. And I'd say that's a part of my life that I'm done with. I'm finished with. I'm moving into other areas. But I'm telling you, when God calls you, I said when God calls you, you can be like Jonah. You can run from it. But when God calls you, sooner or later you're going to find yourself in the belly of a whale. And sooner or later the whale is going to spit you back up. And God is going to say, now I want you to go to Nineveh. Now I want you to go preach what I told you to preach. Hallelujah. So judge me if you want to judge me. But I know what I heard. <laughs> Amen. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They know my voice. You know, one of the, one of the most beautiful, beautiful books in all of the Bible. The Silver Tongue Prophet. That's his nickname. Isaiah. He got the nickname... Because even unbelievers, when I was in high school, we studied chapters out of Isaiah. I don't know if they let them do that now. We studied it as literature. 
Because Shakespeare never wrote anything that could hold the candle to what Isaiah said. Beautiful. You don't have to be a believer to see that. It's beautiful. We're moving into holiday season and not to the not too distant future here in the next two or three months. And you'll drive all over the countryside and you'll see the words of Isaiah. You'll drive all over and you'll see, therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. And a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call His name Emmanuel. You'll drive all over and you'll see, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Isaiah wrote those words under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. The Apostle Paul and the Apostle John regularly quoted from Isaiah. Where Isaiah said he will swallow up death in victory. Amen. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God shall wipe away tears from off all faces. He was a master at words, wasn't he? Jesus himself quoted Isaiah in Isaiah 61 and 1 when he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? There are at least two songs that we sing on a regular basis in our church services. Songs that were written not by some modern fancy dancy songwriter, but songs that were written 2,800 years ago by the wordsmith himself. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We sing another one that says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. Isaiah had a way with words. I quote this one a lot from Isaiah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways, your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And who could ever forget Isaiah prophesying about the coming of John the Baptist, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Or how about Isaiah's proclamation of the absolute oneness of God? Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord. And my servant whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Or how about this one? Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. I could go on and on with Isaiah. Let me give you just a few more examples. Isaiah 35, the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The eyes of the deaf shall be, un- the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. In the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. And a highway shall be there in a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. Isaiah 48, the gla- grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Isaiah 40, 11, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Isn't that beautiful? Isaiah 41, 17, when the poor and the needy seek water and there is none and their tongue fail for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Isaiah 42, 16, I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them Isaiah 43 for now thus saith the Lord that created thee O Jacob and he that formed thee O Israel fear not for I have redeemed thee I have called thee by thy name thou art mine when thou passest through the waters I will be with thee 
and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire thou shalt not be burned amen aren't you thankful for the words of Isaiah behold the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear Isaiah 65 24 and it shall come to pass that before they call I will answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear There are so many that I could give you, but I just, I had to cut it short in the interest of time. And so there is no doubt that Isaiah's reputation as a silver tongue prophet is without question. He is deserving of all of the accolades that he gets. But it wasn't always that way. Because when God called Isaiah, Isaiah said, Woe is me. For I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. I never understood what that meant before. But what Isaiah was saying is I have a foul mouth. I curse. I'm profane. And I dwell in the midst of a people. In other words, I hang around with people with foul mouths. I go to the clubs with people with foul mouths. But he said, woe is me, for I have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. I hang around these people. But then Isaiah said, then flew one of the seraphims or the angels unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, lo, this hath touched thy lips. Thy iniquity is taken away and thy sin is purged. You see, Isaiah thought God needed somebody who always spoke clean and good and nice things. And God said, no, when the Holy Ghost touched your mouth when the Holy Ghost touches your lips when you're filled with the Holy Ghost I'll fix that problem you won't talk like you used to talk you won't live like you used to live you won't act like you used to act when God changes your life we quote it and we preach it and sing it a lot but I but Romans chapter 8 says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. How many of you ever had a problem and you had no idea how to fix it? How to solve it? When your family problems seem hopeless. Have you ever been there before? When your marriage is on the rock. Have you been there before? When your children are out of control. When you've tried everything that you know. When you've read all the self-help books. And you've talked to all the people that you know and trust. And everything that you have done. Everything that you have tried. Has failed. And you say what does all of this mean? What it really means is the spirit is calling. Because we don't even know what direction to turn in. But he said but the spirit says. I'm still here where I always was. Why don't you listen to me? As a pastor, I oftentimes see, and I, don't get me wrong, I am so thankful for the hard workers that we have in this church. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. But I can tell you that as a pastor, sometimes it is, it is discouraging and it is frustrating that we don't have more help than what we have. When I look around and I say, We need more Sunday school teachers. We need more youth workers. We need more altar workers. We need more prayer warriors. We need hospital visitors. We need greeters. We need more greeters. We need this. We need that. And the people that are already doing things are working as hard as they can and doing as much as they can. And sometimes I say, where, God, are they going to come from? Where are these people? Where are these workers? Where are these? How are these needs going to be met? And the needs are so much greater than our abilities. And it's overwhelming. And God says, when you don't know what to pray, I'm already, before you even called, I'm already in the process of raising up some people. He's working on some people. He's raising up some people. When we're, we're floundering around and I'm saying, God, I have no idea. I don't know what to say. I don't even know what to pray. I'm lost. I have no clue. God says, don't worry. I got it all figured out. He told Jeremiah, he said, I have touched your mouth. In our scripture text. He told Isaiah. He said I put the hot coals in your mouth. God calls some. He'll call some of us that are here today to preach. 
He'll call some of us to teach. He'll call some to plant churches and some to work in mission fields. But I'll tell you what he's calling every single one of you to do. To be a witness. But even before that, he's calling you to repent. And some of you he's been calling for a long time. Just like Jeremiah. He said, I had a plan for your life when you were still in your mother's womb. Every single, I believe this, you can believe it differently if you want to. Sister Manny, you can come on. Every single baby conceived in this world, there have been two plans laid out. One is God's. Brother Matt, you mentioned it when you were giving your testimony about all the times he protected you. When you had no idea he was calling you. Every single one of them. God doesn't wake up one day and look at a 20-year-old or a 40-year-old and say, hmm, I wonder what this guy ought to be. He had you planned out the moment you were conceived. Just like he did Jeremiah. But the sad part about it is Satan also had a plan. And the reality of it is is most of us get trapped somewhere in the middle. Because God is saying, I want you to go down this way. And we'll walk that way for a little while. And then Satan will start pulling. But I could give you all of this if you'd go this way. And we go this way for a little while. God loves us enough, Brother Shorter, that even when we do that, He doesn't just say, you messed up my original plan. So I'm just going to wad up the paper and throw it away and I'm done with you. You know what He does? Time to go back to the potter's wheel. Maybe... You won't be the same exact vessel that I had planned for you in the beginning. But you will still be a vessel. You will still be a vessel. He's been calling you ever since you were born. And he's tried different ways and he's tried different methods. But that call was always there. Would you close your eyes for a moment? Let the Holy Ghost speak to you for just a minute. He's dealing with somebody. He's been calling you for a long time. There may be somebody here that's fighting. Maybe you're you're where you need to be with God, but yet you've been fighting a call on your life.